Hi everyone. Hi guys. <clears throat> well, that's a great headband. Like I love it, one? Mandy. Yes, I like that one. Ha. I have my tie dye. Oh, I like it. <laughs> um, last week I did a Zoom and I was told that my eyes looked like they were black because I had a hat on, so I decided not to wear a hat today. Good call. <laughs> See, I listen, everybody. <laughs> you were going incognito. <laughs> <laughs> We have about two minutes, so I want to wait. Yeah, I have a couple of people that said they couldn't find the number. They're texting, so. Okay. You can just tell me when you want me to start, Mandy, okay? Yes, Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, Corinne. When you're ready, you can start. Okay. Welcome, everybody to our Digestive Health Seminar. Uh, my name is Coach Corinne Roberts, and I have known Mandy for how many years, Mandy? Um, I think we're working on seven. Wow. So I came to Georgia, must be around eight years ago. I started working in Georgia. I'm originally from New York and um, I used to own world gyms back then 12 years ago when I became a health coach and I was struggling with uh, digestive health, hormone health. Um, I didn't even realize what I was struggling with at the time. I just knew something was wrong with my body. I had no energy. I was gaining 10 pounds a year for four years. I had chronic tennis elbow. Um, after maybe on year three, um, before my cycle, I started um, getting a cold sore every month, which is just a virus, which is a sign of an impaired immune system. So um, all of these things were going on at once and I just felt like my life was falling apart, right? So, um, and I just didn't have any energy to live my life to be a mom and a wife and a trainer and take care of all my clients. And um, that's when I went to school. So I knew there was something I didn't know. It was more than calories in, calories out. It was more than just eating healthy food and exercising, right? So after a while, as our body starts breaking down, um, it starts um, speaking to us. So we just have to uh, learn how to be our own detectives. So um, this led me to become a TLS weight management coach. Um, 
and I now train coaches all around the country and the globe. Uh, then I went to Institute of Integrative Nutrition. Um, then as my clients were coming off their medications, uh, which I didn't know why at the time, um, I was health coaching them. Um, but we have a medical wellness um, division in our company, and that's when I started teaching doctors about wellness. So um, what we need to understand is that doctors don't go to school for nutrition and wellness. They go to school. People, all my clients get mad when they go to their doctor and they um, prescribe them a medication, right? You go in and tell them something's wrong and you come out with a prescription and they're like, I, I don't want to take their prescriptions. Well, you have to remember that doctors practice medicine. So um, that's what they know as pharmaceuticals. So that's why they're always gonna give you a script. So I actually go in and teach um, health professionals um, about nutrition and nutraceuticals so we can help to get people off a of pharmaceutical um, if it's possible. So um, then I took the um, gut health and hormone health specialist because so many of my clients were struggling with challenges um, beyond the basics, right? Um, beyond our four-prong approach of our TLS weight management system, and I had to go deeper into that. But tonight, we're going to focus on uh, gut health. And that's because um, all of your health starts in your gut. And so, yeah. Sorry. Before we go on, are you recording? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure that. Okay. I'm yep. so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, so all of your health starts in your gut. So what we're going to speak about tonight, uh, I'm going to go through a brief description about how your digestive system works so you can understand that. You know, I always think knowledge is power. Instead of telling people what to do, um, I want to teach you why, the why behind it. And when you start um, getting that detective mindset, um, then you can start asking the right questions and looking for the right clues. So uh, I'm going to talk about some of the most common digestive uh, challenges, which, you know, there's a lot of them and I can't get into everything here. Um, as you get further into digestive health challenges, then we get into specific uh, foods and diets and um, which I can help, you know, uh, with that as well. Um, and help you be that detective. So if your questions aren't answered by the end of tonight, um, definitely you know set up a 30 minute consultation with me. I do that for free. Mandy's my partner. Um, we all work together. So um, <clears throat> uh, natural digestive health products that can help your gut. Um, and then the difference between pharmaceuticals um, or over-the-counter uh, medications and nutraceuticals. So, you know, like I just spoke about, pharmaceuticals um, are going to band-aid or mask a symptom. When you tell a symptom, they're going to come out with a pharmaceutical. A nutraceutical is going to get to the root cause uh, because we want to start the healing, right? Um, figure out what's wrong and go in and um, heal this. Now, um, the thing is, this doesn't happen overnight. Just like we don't get unhealthy overnight, um, we don't get healthy overnight. And it takes a while for our bodies to repair themselves, but our bodies are amazing. Through all this training that I'm taking, as I'm understanding what our bodies are doing with or without us, it's, it's a miracle, really. Um, but when things start uh, going wrong, and a lot of times in the beginning, we ignore those things. Um, because we have a life to live, right? We don't have time to stop and take care of it. So we just want to like take something and move on with our life until our body says, stop, you aren't going anywhere, right? So let's start with uh, um, our digestion. Um, but it doesn't matter who you are. We're all totally the same. Everyone in the world poops. So um, 
I always tell people your digestion is way more than if you're pooping or not pooping, but this is one of our biggest clues. And a lot of people say they don't have gut health challenges, but they really don't understand uh, quality bowel movement. But the first thing I want to uh, mention, because um, I say once we have the poop talk, now we can talk about anything. <laughs> so um, we've like, the ice is broken, right? <laughs> So, um, but think about when babies are born, okay? And what do they do? They poop, they eat, they sleep. So, you know, they eat, poop, sleep. And over and over, all day long, right? So when I sit down with my clients and they say, oh, I don't, I only go every three days, but you know, that's my normal. And I say, well, it's not normal. Um, but when did we get out of that mindset that, you know, when we eat a, a food and break it down and absorb the nutrients, the waste is supposed to be leaving our body. So it isn't causing all these toxins in us. So, um, so that's where that talk comes in. I'm not gonna get any further into that. Um, and so let's start with your digestive system. So your digestive system is designed to turn the food that you eat into nutrients that are small enough so they can be absorbed in the blood or your lymphatic system. That's where your fats are absorbed is your lymphatic system, uh, which your body's going to use for energy growth, muscle growth and uh, cellular repair. And so tonight we're gonna talk about how that works. But first I wanna give you a little um, vision, okay? Because when this was put to me in my training module, um, that your digestive system is not connected to your body. It's totally independent from your mouth all the way down. Um, to your rectum, it's it's independent. So think about this: that um, you know when you drive through a tunnel uh, that has water around it, right? Um, when you drive into that tunnel, you aren't in the water, right? You're in the tunnel, and the water is outside of you. So think about your digestive system like that, okay? Um, it it's independent of your body. So starting from the beginning of your digestion, your digestion starts in your mouth. So how many times have um, you walked in a room or you've smelled a favorite food or something and your mouth waters, right? That is where digestion is starting, right in your mouth when, as you're salivating, okay? So um, your, your mouth starts making a digestive enzyme called amylase that is gonna start breaking down the sugars and the starches in your mouth. So here's the thing, um, how many of us are like going crazy all day and just shoving food in your mouth and, you know, chugging through lunch, right? Well, you're supposed to be chewing every bite of food 30 times. And when I uh, do my seminars, I have people like bring a healthy snack, you know, take a bite of an apple or something. Try chewing that 30 times, one bite. <laughs> it is like, who has the patience for that, right? So, um, so we just aren't getting our food broken down as much as we should with the mechanisms that we have. So once the food leaves your mouth, it's going into your throat. Now, here's something I'd like to mention. I'm gonna be talking about a lot of inside muscles tonight. Um, we talk about our outside muscles in the gym, right? But we have all of these inside muscles um, going on that are working with or without us. One of them is uh, um, your esophagus. So think about when you um, have stress and you tense up, right? Um, what happens is um, we have peristalsis um, in our esophagus because when you chew the food and it goes down the tube um, and then there's a sphincter at the bottom of your esophagus and that is what holds the food in your stomach. It's not supposed to come back up, okay? So, but when you're stressed, a lot of times what will happen is that sphincter will open up and acid from your stomach will come up into um, your throat. 
So, you know, we call that acid reflux, right? Um, it can also happen, like, say, when you go to bed at night, say you ate a big steak, which is highly acidic, or you ate late at night, and your body didn't have time to digest your food, and then you lay down, then um, that food can come back up that sphincter if it's not strong enough. So the next place after it goes through that tube, it goes into your stomach. Your stomach is um, full of high acids. You want a very high acidity in your stomach, okay? So um, when someone has acid reflux and that stomach acid is coming up their throat and then you go out and buy an antacid, right? You're gonna lower your stomach acid, but then what do you think happens when the food hits your stomach? Then the food doesn't get broken down because that high acidity breaks that food right down into chum liquid in your stomach. But if you're taking an acids and your acid is low, um, and, and it's a muscle too, so it's gonna grind and mix your food until it can make that chum, right? Um, so, but if you have taken um, acid lowering medications, you aren't gonna have enough stomach acid or enzymes to break down the food that you're eating. Now, this is one of the reasons why I look for in clients, if you have midsection belly fat, you can tell me that you have a great digestion, um, but if people have midsection belly fat, I know that their body is storing uh, food around their waste, food, toxins, fats, um, everything around their waste that it can't break down or maybe it didn't recognize, it didn't know what to do with it, right? This is what happens when we eat processed food as well. So as I'm going through this and I'm, and I'm telling you every step of the way your food has to go and, and to remember how I said in the beginning, what does your body want at the end of digestion of the food? It wants to grab all of those nutrients for your blood and lymphatic system so it can use it for energy and fuel. What if you ate a Big Mac that day. <laughs> what if you ate, um, you know, a big old uh, hunk of bread, some spaghetti, which is all just flour and sugar, and your body's going to work and work and work to break that food down to get the reward, which is supposed to be the nutrients to turn into energy, but it's done all of this work and it's gotten zero energy, okay? So, and I'm not saying that we can't have treats once in a while, but you know, I'm saying that we need to look at food as fuel, okay? Um, and that it's gonna power your body, it's, it's your gas tank, right? Um, so, and you wanna put out a lot of energy, so you have to put in a lot of energy. So the same thing with under eating, if you aren't putting the nutrition in your body, it's not gonna have any energy to put out. So let's keep going on our journey here. And the next place that your food goes from your stomach, once it's turned into chum and liquid, is it goes into your small intestines. And this is where 90% of your digestion and absorption happens, okay? So um, you have small little microvilli in your uh, small intestines, and you have little pockets that are gonna absorb nutrients. So if your food isn't all the way broken down, um, you don't wanna miss that pocket where that nutrient can absorb, it's an absorption site. And if your villi are all matted down um, because maybe you've eaten a lot of gluten or bread, you know, that has gluten in it and gluten is like glue and it's gonna mat down those villi. So they aren't gonna be like this, ready to receive, they're gonna be closed, right? So, um, so this is uh, what happens is you might be eating food, you might be eating a great salad and full of nutrients, but your villi are closed, okay? So this is part of why I know a lot of you are coming off um, your cleanse week. This is why we cleanse, because sometimes when we start losing energy and we don't really know exactly what's going on, but we want to get everything vibrant and, and scrubbed up and working well again. I'll talk about that a little bit later. 
So then from there, um, your pancreas, liver, and gallbladder go to work. That's the other thing about that cleanse that a lot of you did. It's not just a liver cleanse. Everyone thinks uh, their liver is the only one doing the heavy lifting. But, you know, everything plays its part. Your pancreas um, secretes enzymes into the small intestines. Um, the enzymes are going to break down your proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Then your liver um, is going to secrete bile, and that's going to cleanse, purify the blood and the toxins coming through the small intestines containing the nutrients that your body just absorbed. So here's another thing, and this isn't, um, I'm not talking about stress and adrenals tonight, but I am going to mention stress because it is a big factor uh, with digestion. So during stress, um, when your body is stressed in fight or flight mode, then um, in order to have that energy, like to push over a car or things like that, when you need that adrenaline, uh, it, your body has to shut other things down. So what happens is your motility slows down in your digestion when you're stressed all the time because it can't digest food. That's a whole process and take care of the stress. So um, what your liver does, because um, that stress takes energy and um, sugar is energy, carbohydrates are energy. So um, what happens in your liver is it starts converting sugar into fuel and it starts creating uh, more and more. So instead of dealing with the toxins, um, it's gonna push the toxins aside back into your bloodstream or it's gonna store them in your fat cells and they're gonna wreak havoc later. Um, so if you're living in this high stress life, we have to talk about some stress management and I know it's hard and obviously right now, you know, this is happening with kids too. So, you know, I'm um, going back to school and things like that, whether they're telling you about that they're stressed or have anxiety or uh, things like that, it affects their digestion as well. So, you know, I was joking about the poop slide, but, you know, ask, always ask your children if they're um, having a bowel movement every day um, or if you notice that they're in the bathroom you know for uh, a long time or having some struggles with that um, so our gallbladder you know we say we don't need our gallbladder which we we can live without our gallbladder um, but it actually has a function um, so our gallbladder is where um, it sits right under the liver and it's going to store bile the bile's made in the liver, but then we store it in the gallbladder. And what that bile does is um, the gallbladder contracts and it sends the bile to the small intestines um, and it carries the waste. It's like uh, lubricates um, your small intestines. So it helps ease that passage of the waste uh, because it's not a straight shot. It's all wound up in there. Um, and then it's going to move it into your large intestines, which is our colon, okay? So, and this is where our stool is formed. Um, this is where a lot of our uh, bacteria is um, because it feeds on all of that. So when we, when we talk about um, gut bacteria. So one thing I wanna mention for people who are uh, chronically constipated because this is something I struggled with um, for years. So I would take something like Miralax or whatever, you know, to empty out the fecal matter. Um, but what happens is your colon, here's another muscle that I'm gonna talk about that has this peristalsis. So as um, when we have too much waste coming into the colon and it's not being removed, your colon muscle is actually going to stretch and it's gonna form a pocket in it. So even if you take something that will clean out your colon eventually, but you aren't getting the urge to go because what happens is you start losing your peristalsis and it forms a pocket in your colon. So um, part of that cleanse that a lot of you did, the herbs in that cleanse, 
it actually, the herbs help to rebuild the arterial walls of your colon because we have to get your peristalsis back so it's working for you um, because you need to get the urge every day to go to the bathroom. And if you aren't getting that urge, then we just need to strengthen. We need to strengthen your digestive system. And that can happen over time. And I know a lot of people who come to me and they say, I've been struggling with this since I was a kid. So did I. <laughs> and, you know, my mom was a single mom and we ate Kraft macaroni and cheese and hot dogs every night and TV dinners. And, you know, we just didn't eat very good quality foods. And I always had digestive challenges, but nobody talked about it or really knew about it then. So like we took Pepto-Bismo and things like that. But, you know, if your body is trying to explode something out of itself, um, because it doesn't want it there. Why would we take something that makes it stop, right? So I want you to start looking at things a little bit differently that are stopping what our bodies want to be doing and are urging us to do. So why does all of this matter? So the early signs of um, digestive health challenges are inflammation constipation, um, any distress, including high stress, um, your intestinal tract can't do its job, like I was mentioning. So have you, and we've all experienced indigestion, heartburn, gas, bloating, flatulence, um, but is it chronic? Is it constant? Is it happening all the time? Um, partially digested foods or oils in the stool, um, intestinal cramping or pain with foods um, or going to the bathroom, you know, again, um, just, you know, you don't even have, you might make your child feel uncomfortable if you have children, but, or grandchildren, but just pay attention. You know, once I started opening my eyes, I started, you know, I knew things would make them feel uncomfortable, but just asking questions here and there. Um, joint pain or stiffness, skin problems. Uh, when someone has acne, uh, um, you know, your skin is telling the story. It's your greatest, your biggest organ, whether it's back acne, whether it's um, facial acne or chest acne, that is a sign of digestive health challenges. So, um, and I'm gonna be talking about digestive enzymes later. Um, diarrhea or constipation. So when we talk about um, digestive health, we want to have homeostasis. So um, we, we don't wanna to go too much and we don't wanna um, not go enough. Um, vomiting, belching, regurgitation. Uh, throat clearing. Why I put this in capital letters is that this is the first sign of acid reflux and digestive challenges. And I noticed this with my mom. When I started coaching my mom, she was 65 and she just had this um, all the time and clearing her throat. It was just like a dryness um, or a sore throat. Um, and this now is something I watch for as I'm speaking to my clients. And I ask them if that's something just today or does that you know, happen all the time? Uh, so health challenges like depression, um, high cholesterol, um, I'm going to go over enzymes and, um, you know, cholesterol is a, a fat, a buildup of fat in the arteries. So if your fat is building up in your arteries, we need to get it breaking down. That just tells me if someone has high cholesterol, that their body is not metabolizing fats well. Um, thyroid and adrenal challenges. This is a biggie with my clients. Um, a lot of them don't even realize it's gotten to the point of, adrenal challenges, but uh, um, this is something we talk about um, even more in the adrenal um, and uh, thyroid health and cortisol seminar. Uh, um, and then autoimmune diseases. Every autoimmune disease, rheumatoid arthritis, um, MS, uh, um, Hashimoto's disease, um, I can go on and on, gout, um, they are all caused by digestive challenges. 
it's just your immune system because your gut, 80% of your immune system is found in your gut. And when we talk about brain challenges like depression, anxiety, um, your brain is, um, you have a gut brain connection. So your brain is, your gut is signaling your brain. We'll talk about that a little bit. So poor digestion can lead to weight gain, especially around the midsection area, decreased immune system, uh, hormonal imbalances, um, insulin, uh, PCOS is something I deal a lot with, um, more so with women than men. Uh, women who can't get pregnant um, is another thing because like I spoke about, uh, slow motility and a lot of those are linked to stress and adrenals. Uh, food sensitivities and allergies, and these can come up later. So it's like most of them we aren't born with. Sometimes we are, and you might know about them, but things can come on at any time as far as food allergies. And that doesn't mean you're going to be allergic to it your whole life either. Um, you might just be sensitive to it and you can't eat it for a while. So that's something else I talk to clients about as we'll get into a little bit more. Um, and um, it can lead to intense cravings for the very food that caused the imbalance. So I should have known the, my big red flag when I heard uh, bread and pasta were not going to be on my food list and they made up part of my day every day, either pizza or spaghetti or just because they were easy meals um, that, you know, and I felt a panic about it <laughs> when I, I was like, what am I going to eat, right? If I can't eat those things because they were just staples in our lives. So, but, you know, that's the other thing that we teach you how to find new favorite foods. And there's so many great substitutions because really I just wanted to get the sauce and cheese in my mouth. Um, so I just use a different vehicle than the bread and the pasta. So, um, but these are things that we'll talk about because I know a lot of people feel like we're taking everything away from them and, you know, and we start getting, um, um, defiant, right? Like I've given up so much of my life. I'm not giving up my pizza. Right. So, but we'll teach you, you know, better ways to make foods and I make them very easy. I don't, I'm not a big cook, um, but I cook very simply. And I must say, especially during COVID, I've become a great healthy cook. So um, progression, deterioration of the intestinal wall. Um, this can lead to leaky gut syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, diverticulitis, Crohn's, um, stomach ulcers, you know, there's just a whole gambit of digestive health challenges. Um, I call it the whisper, the brick in the wall. Most of them start uh, with acid reflux and then move on down the line. But this is what I want to tell you. Um, the hope is that our body can really heal itself when we give it the nutrients it needs in the most bioavailable form, um, it will repair itself. And that doesn't mean that you won't own a disease um, if you've been diagnosed with something, but you can certainly have a great quality of life with a disease, okay? Um, and that is really my whole goal as a health coach is to help people have a better quality of life um, where they don't feel like they're sacrificing everything. We want, I want joy in my life. I never thought I could put food back in the joy category in my life, but it's definitely there. And it just takes some changes because we have some bad habits and just things we grew up with or have memories around or whatever, but we can really replace most any food, except I can't replace my, um, my hot margaritas. That's the only thing I can't replace. <laughs> so, um, but you know, I used to like a Corona beer with Mexican years ago, uh, once in a while, but I just, I can't tolerate gluten. So I don't drink any kind of beer or anything. So, you know, that's a talk as well. I know people, some people, um, you know, the, the deal breakers can be alcohol, um, can be sugar, can be bread. You know, there's a lot of those deal breakers. So um, nutrition is key. So um, the cause of most digestive disruptions um, and um, GI tract diseases is often poor nutrition. But you know what? That's the good news and the bad news all at once. 
So um, when you can make some small manageable changes, um, it, it's just that our food isn't, you know, that great of quality. So we just have to um, learn how to read labels and learn how to make things in a more nutrient dense way. And you know what the great thing is, is that your whole family is going to get healthier. What I loved about TLS is that we aren't sitting in the corner on a diet eating away from everybody else. I make all the same meals for my whole family. And actually in the beginning, they would add things to it, like maybe bread to the pork roast or whatever. Um, I wouldn't eat it. But after a while, my whole family just kind of, they got used to the new food and they started craving the good food. So, um, and asking for it. So, but your biggest um, common troublemakers for digestive health are gluten and dairy. So I talked about gluten for a minute. Um, it's found, um, it's actually the protein that's found in wheat, rye, barley. Uh, sometimes there can be a cross-contamination with oats. So, you know, I use steel-cut oats and uh, um, quinoa is a non-gluten grain. So there's a lot of great grain replacements. Um, I don't do as much with rice just because it's a higher glycemic. So um, especially in the beginning, I try to keep the sugars low. Um, but certainly that's something, you know, later on uh, that can be added back in. So, um, but gluten is like glue. So, um, and that's what's going to mat down those villi. And what happened is, um, you know, when you go to a store and you squeeze, a, you would squeeze a loaf of bread um, and you want it to squish in and squish out, right? So if it's stale, you're not going to buy it. So what they found is by adding more and more gluten to things, which it's actually, unfortunately, um, in soy sauce, it's in a lot of things because it's so cheap. And um, a lot of people are gluten sensitive, okay? Uh, gluten intolerant is celiac disease and you can get a test done or whatever. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, I have the test, I'm not celiac. Well, that isn't 100%, okay? What I tell people to do is do the gluten test. Remove it from your diet. <laughs> for 10 to 14 days and see how your body functions without it. I love starting people with that seven day uh, cleanse. And actually I always measure people's waist right around their belly button. That's the only measurement I really care about because that's the measurement of health. So, and that's really all my clients care about too. So it's a win-win. But sometimes after that cleanse week, when we remove the gluten and um, get things out of their body, a lot of my clients will lose like seven inches in one week, right? Well, obviously you didn't lose seven inches in a week, you were bloated. And, you know, I didn't even realize until I removed gluten from my system, uh, how bloated I was all the time. My ankles were swelling all the time. Um, I was wasn't eating a lot of salt or anything, um, my fingers, my joints. Um, so, you know, gluten can cause a lot of different things. You can see over here to the right, uh, bone loss. Um, I actually have osteopenia, um, anemia. So a lot of people with digestive health challenges have low iron and are anemic. And um, a sign of low iron is actually heart palpitations. So that can be misdiagnosed as anxiety attack. So um, definitely have your iron check because it goes hand in hand. Um, diarrhea, bloating, canker sores, IBS, constipation, acid reflux, um, reoccurrent miscarriages. So, um, and also neurological challenges. Gluten has really been connected with um, schizophrenia and a lot of um, different brain challenges. So, so I just say pull it out and see how you feel. And the other thing we want to do is um, stabilize your insulin levels, okay? Because a lot of people aren't eating breakfast and they aren't eating soon enough in the morning. So we want to make sure that you're getting, um, it's, you know, it should be, I used to like, I wasn't hungry in the morning, I'd slam my coffee and I'd skip lunch because I'd be working with my clients and then I'd get home and it was like I could eat the kitchen sink and I would. 
<laughs> unfortunately, um, because then it's just sitting there in your stomach and then you go to sleep and then your sleep is disrupted. So um, it's just a vicious cycle that some people get into. So in the beginning, because um, we're not talking about all of your different hormones that are found around your midsection, but your leptin and ghrelin hormones, the ones that tell you whether to be hungry or full, a lot of people will say, well, I'm not hungry when I wake up in the morning. And I say, you are actually starving, but you are not getting the signaling from your brain to be hungry. So in the beginning, because after you've skipped breakfast for so long, um, your body, the signal just turns off and says, I'm not hungry. So we have to regulate those leptin and ghrelin hormones and get your body firing and signaling again. So I want everyone to be eating a healthy breakfast um, with um, like eggs and vegetables. Or if you can't stomach a full breakfast, because I wasn't a breakfast person, I make a protein shake with spinach and uh, complete greens in it. Uh, um, so, you know, and I, and I drink that and then I'll have my meal later. So, you know, talk to Mandy about a good system for you and figuring out, you know, where you can get started on that. But we want our energy to be even all through the day. And that is also what is going to make you burn fat as well. So, um, keep sure your body in a fat storage mode. So I'm talking about it for digestive health because when we put those, other than Thanksgiving, which we all overeat, right? <laughs> but if Thanksgiving is every night, <laughs> I can't believe I ate the whole thing, right? <laughs> because you just couldn't stop. I'll, I can eat my husband under the table. He says I shouldn't brag about that, but <laughs> but I, I used to do that all the time because I was like starving by the time I would get home. So we're going to change up that signaling. So um, other ways to um, improve your digestive health is lowering your sugar. Um, remove that um, gluten and dairy for a while and just see how your body reacts. Now, I want to stress the importance of journaling because um, if you don't journal your food, and I know a lot of people will say to me, oh, well, I just I eat the same thing all day. And I say, great. Why don't you take a picture of it and then send it to me because I need to see it. I need to see how much it is because, you know, here's the thing, you know, clients will say, oh, I, I eat a salad for lunch every day. Well, I say, oh, great. That's good. That's a good choice. Well, then I'll get a picture of it and it's like this big, you know, when really you should be eating a salad this big, right? So I always focus on a protein and two vegetables with every meal. Um, and if, you know, there's health challenges or other things, then, you know, we talk about that. So um, eating a well-balanced, nutritious meals, five to six meals a day is going to support your adrenal and thyroid health because you want to fuel your body incrementally throughout the day um, with energy. And that will stabilize your insulin levels that will support your adrenals and support your thyroid as well as well as um, helping to repair your digestion. Uh, drink lots of water because water flushes toxins. So half your body weight in ounces of water. Um, the other thing is make sure you're drinking filtered water. I know everyone's learned this by now, you know, to use metal containers or glass containers. Uh, try not, if you can, drink out of plastic because those PBAs are toxins. If you aren't using a water filter, your body is the filter. Filter, so it's just going to disrupt it um, and that it's called endocrine disruptors because those plastics actually add estrogen to your body and a lot of us are already um, estrogen dominant because of the high stress in our bodies. Um, because high stress causes your body to use its uh, progesterone. Um, to make more cortisol and then we end up estrogen dominant which can cause a lot of things um, it can cause cramps it can cause a lot of different things so again that's a different seminar um, chewing your food thoroughly um, like i mentioned earlier on one of the first slides uh, taking high quality absorbable nutritional supplements um, that are going to get to the root cause of your digestive stress you know, people who have digestive challenges, they aren't breaking down their food. 
So if they're taking a multivitamin in a pill form, why would they think that is going to break down either? So um, I'll talk about our isotonic capable supplements. That was probably one of the only energies I was getting in the beginning of this journey. And I really didn't realize how powerful they were, but I was walking around with zero energy. And I was taking like um, 16 supplements because I knew something was wrong with me. And I was reading articles and I was putting a new pill in my box. And But I didn't realize none of those were breaking down because my digestion was so bad by that point. So um, decreasing the use of over-the-counter pharmaceutical digestive aids. Now, if you are prescribed something, you need to always consult with your health professional. I like to work hand in hand with people's doctors um, and because we wanna go in with the nutraceuticals and then get them off like the 24 hour Prevacid, um, uh, things like that. All of those 24 hour proton pumps and things, um, they make it so your body can absorb zero calcium. When you take Tums and some doctors, I know years ago, somehow they got doctors to say, take Tums for your calcium. Well, an antacid um, makes it so your body can't absorb any calcium. So if you're taking um, a 24 hour antacid, you still need to take it um, because you have that challenge. But I have people take, uh, drink a cap of our um, isotonic calcium, wait the five minutes and then take their 24 hours. So I know they're at least getting the 400 milligrams of calcium, uh, which is all your body can absorb in a sitting. So don't take more than that at this sitting. Some people are taking 1200 milligrams. Um, and then, um, you know, as you change the food that you're eating and um, you can start coming off your acid reflux medications and things, you'll find that you won't need them anymore. But some people have been taking them for a long, long time and are afraid to go off those. So it's a process, just, you know, have faith in the journey, okay? So um, high quality nutritional supplements, I'm going to talk about a few of those. But the first thing I want to talk about is um, what is isotonic? So um, your bodily fluids have an isotonicity to them. And um, what um, they need salt or sugar um, for something to absorb in your system. So our isotonics are made, it's a powder you mix with two ounces of liquid. You drink it on an empty stomach, even before you brush your teeth, because you don't want that pyloric valve to open up an acid. Um, it's going to bypass your stomach acids. It's going to absorb in your lower intestines and become 95% bioavailable. Um, especially with my gastric bypass patients, a lot of them um, we're taking Flintstone vitamins and things like that as well. Um, so it's just very important that your nutrients are getting absorbed in your system. Where a pill, a lot of people will take a pill for a vitamin that makes them feel sick, um, like prenatals too. We have a great prenatal, but um, a lot of pregnant women um, quit taking their prenatals because they have um, because it upsets their stomach. So then they aren't getting those extra B vitamins and nutrients that their body needs when really they should just take them isotonically. So, um, cause those pills can sit in your stomach for hours breaking down. Now, if you take a thyroid medication, um, they say don't eat or don't eat anything for four hours or whatever before. You can drink your isotonics first, wait the five minutes. They just don't want food sitting in your stomach because that pill is going to be sitting in your stomach and breaking down. So the disadvantages of pill delivery system, I kind of already went through that. Um, they don't completely dissolve. Um, and, um, and then you take them with water and then you get stomach dumping with all the water. So the absorption sites become saturated. Um, I thought this was an a uh, fascinating slide that uh, one of the medical doctors um, gave to us to use where they show uh, Centrum and they show all of these. Um, you know, a lot of doctors find pharmaceuticals and nutrients 
pharmaceuticals past the point of absorption. My nurses that I'm um, partners with in my medical wellness, they call them bedpan bullets because a lot of people's pill forms, they just aren't even breaking down at all. So um, digestive enzymes, I used to have cupboards full of Tums, my Lanta, especially if we went on a trip, right? Because when you go on a trip, you aren't eating all your vegetables. And um, so the first thing I would throw in is this big thing of Tums because I knew I was going to have digestive challenges on a vacation. So now we throw in our digestive enzymes. Anytime we're eating something that doesn't have fiber enzymes in life, I take my digestive enzymes. My digestion is good now, so I don't have to take them with every meal. But in the beginning of my journey, I just took enzymes with every meal because something wasn't breaking down because um, I had some of those um, uh, side effects that I was telling you about um, different things, whether it was acid reflux or bloating or whatever. Uh, um, so I'm gonna go through these. Um, and you don't need to know what's not breaking down. I actually know now um, because I just had my gene sniff DNA uh, done, and I found out, which, you know, geez, I wish I would have known this when I was a kid. My body doesn't metabolize fats well, and it doesn't metabolize sugars well. So those genes were red. So um, I, if I would have known that, that's why I had digestive challenges. It, it was part of my genetics, actually. So, um, uh, so amylase is going to break down your carbohydrates. Uh, cellulase we don't make, so we have to take, and I'm going to go through these a little bit deeper. So um, symptoms of lack of digestive enzymes are stools that float, and um, I don't need you to be a scientist with your poop, but if you look in and your poop's floating, that means that your fats are not digesting indigestion or heartburn, um, using an acids frequently, uh, nausea, diarrhea, vomiting might be from lactose intolerant, um, increased midsection belly fat, your food isn't breaking down, uh, bloating and stomach pain, undigested food is decomposing and making gas. So protease. Protease. Uh, protease breaks down uh, protein. And, you know, we're always telling you to, um, and actually I'm menopausal now, so I need even more protein. But whatever your goal weight is, you should be eating in grams of protein. Um, especially menopausal women need even more protein. And that's where those shakes come in. I'm not talking about those tonight, but I could not sit there and gnash on a chicken breast, you know, or two um, all day long. Or if I see a big steak, it just, I can take a couple bites, but I just can't eat like that humongous steak. So you have to find different ways to get your protein in, but then we have to make sure that it's bro bro breaking down because protein is your building blocks uh, for everything, your cell repair, um, your energy, your muscle is made of protein. So we have to make sure it's getting uh, broken down. So um, let's see, amylase. Uh, amylase digests carbohydrates. It's going to help remove dead white blood cells. It's involved in anti-inflammatory reactions. So a deficiency in amylase can contribute to skin disorders. So um, what psoriasis, um, you know, think about different things that come out on our skin, rashes. Um, also, you know, with digestive challenges, we can get histamine rashes and things like that. So we have to um, make sure that's breaking down. So lipase, uh, if someone has high cholesterol, like I said, that buildup of fat in the arteries, that means that their body is not breaking down uh, fats well. So you need to have lipase. And especially now, because a lot of people are doing more keto-based, which I actually can't do, according to my gene SNP, because my body doesn't metabolize fats. So that's why if I eat a high-fat diet, my hair will start falling out um, because I get malabsorption of fats. And I didn't understand that before, what those things meant. I thought that was my thyroid, but it actually had to do with uh, fat intake. So we want to make sure that the fats that we're 
eating are getting broken down because your brain is made of 80% fat. So um, that's where like anxiety, depression, um, if you go in a room and you're forgetful, things like that, you wanna make sure that your brain is getting the fats. Lactase deficiency. Um, that's the main sugar in milk is lactose. Um, so usually diarrhea, abdominal pain, bloating can lead, you know, to that. Now I used to be a huge um, cheese eater. Um, I don't eat as much anymore. I, I still eat cheese, but I just sprinkle, you know, a little on or I have cottage cheese or I have plain Greek yogurt. Um, I actually use that for my sour cream and my taco salads. Um, but I just don't like smother everything anymore like I used to, but now I can tolerate it better. Um, even though I know when I eat cheese, um, I do have a little um, disruption. So I always take enzymes when I eat cheese. Uh, cellulase it is actually found in vegetables. So even some people will find like on cleanse week when you're taking a huge, you're eating a huge plethora of vegetables and you aren't, your body's not used to it, that maybe you aren't breaking down and absorbing those even though they have enzymes in them to break themselves down. But um, I know my troublemakers are broccoli and eggplant. Um, so sometimes it's healthy foods that can be troublemakers, you know, as well. So um, the cellulase will help to break those down. So you're getting all the phytonutrients from your vegetables. So a lot of times when I cleanse people, I actually have them take the digestive enzymes with their meals just to make sure that what they're putting in is getting broken down and absorbed. Um, so other helpful tips are to modify your diet, manage chronic stress, exercise gets everything moving you know when we talk about fats building up in your arteries um, it's because they're in a solid state so when we exercise and we're moving um, it's going to heat the fat up and it's going to push it through your lymphatic system because that's how uh, fats leave your body so um, exercise is critical to that process and then main maintaining a healthy gut microbiome um, I'm not going to go through all the questions. You can't take too many enzymes. Whatever your body needs, it'll use and the rest will just dissipate. So we'll keep moving here. Um, activated bees are huge. Um, these um, help metabolize proteins, fats, and carbohydrates in your body. Uh, three things deplete bees. Um, stress, sugar, sugar with a kick, which is alcohol. Um, it supports your metabolism. It helps maintain skin and muscle. You know, um, even exercise causes oxidative stress. It's a good stress for your body, but we actually need um, more B vitamins. They're water soluble. Uh, for our cell growth. Um, it promotes energy, but not in the way like drinking a cup of coffee. It's not a stimulant, okay? Um, and actually for me, because my ADHD gene um, is red, um, it, Actually, bees, um, because bees are great with homeostasis. So if you get heightened with anxiety, um, bees will bring you back in balance. If um, you feel depressed when you have stress, it, bees will bring you up. So it's not, you know, huge energy for everyone. So it's a different kind of energy. I like to say it's more about focus, okay? Bees give you focus and mental health, uh, better mood, better memory, and it supports a healthy heart and uh, your homocysteine levels of your heart. So they can't be made in the body. Um, they're water-based, so they're depleted often. Um, so you really need to be, um, B vitamins are actually found in meat. So, um, but a lot of people aren't eating um, as much meat as they used to. Um, it's critical for detoxification and those neurotransmitters and your hormones. Um, so, and I mentioned that it's depleted by sugar and alcohol. Um, actually, a lot of pharmaceuticals um, will deplete your B vitamins, um, and they don't say that on the label. So, 
um, and definitely by chronic stress. So I actually take bees um, two or three times a day. But here's the big thing about bee. Um, a lot of people are taking a pill form of bee, and this is something else in our um, DNA gene SNP. Um, um, some people don't methylate, actually 45% of people don't methylate B vitamins, B1, B6, and B12. So our B vitamin is not only in the isotonic form that we drink them, um, so they're bioavailable, but they're in the activated methylated form, so your body does not have to break it down. So um, B1 actually has to do with strokes. Um, thiamine, and it's one of the main uh, ones depleted uh, with alcohol. B6 has more to do with metabolizing uh, um, your food. Um, and then B12, think about um, elderly people, they go and get B12 shots for energy, right? Um, so B12 um, is what's going to give you that energy. Um, and, you know, we might be metabolizers, but, you know, as we get older, just everything kind of slows down as we age, unfortunately, right? So uh, magnesium is another thing. Um, it's actually uh, more missing uh, than calcium in people's bodies, people who get migraine headaches. Um, so these are all DSHEA approved um, things, which means that these are proven facts about um, magnesium. So when I have people, um, calcium is for skeletal contraction, magnesium is for muscle relaxation. So think if you're stressed all the time, and remember how I said your colon is a muscle? So um, your colon is um, clenching, uh, um, clenching up and it needs to relax, right? So that's what magnesium will help you do. It also will help you maintain normal blood pressure. It'll help improve your sleep quality um, because it'll help relax you before you go to bed. So it's not like taking a sleeping pill. It gets your body relaxed to go to bed, okay? It supports your bone health because it's needed to absorb calcium um, and it's important. I'm going to fly through these because I'm getting up to my hour here, Mandy. Um, fiber powder. The biggest thing with fiber powder is I tell people, quit buying cheap fiber powder. It's abrasive. It scrubs your system and it's a uh, it causes inflammation, and most of my clients already have inflammation. So you want a non-abrasive, insoluble fiber um, that's going to fuel your microbiome. Um, it helps uh, with cholesterol levels, triglycerides, your insulin levels. Um, fiber blunts the glycemic index of food. Um, if I am gonna have a drink, um, as a treat on a Friday, I'll drink, I have a, a, this drink called the Dirty Martini, my fiber greens and bee. <laughs> I'll drink that. Um, but, um, or if I'm going to have something with sugar in it, you know, don't eat bread and things first. Eat your salad first and then um, eat something if you're going to have it um, after because fiber blunts. So it can delay post-meal hunger. Um, actually, if I'm craving something sweet in the afternoon or evening, I drink my fiber powder. I say I can have something if I want, but as soon as I drink my fiber, I, I'm not, I don't crave it anymore. So um, we used to drink, eat upwards of 100 grams of fiber daily. Um, most Americans are only getting uh, 10 to 13 grams of fiber a day. So it's recommended 25 to 35 grams of fiber a day. Um, we're just eating too much processed foods and getting too many environmental toxins and excess sugars and stress. So and we need to focus on getting more vegetables, um, fruit, water, clean air, get outside. So, um, help support your colon, digestive health. A lot of you use this if you did the seven day cleanse. Um, our fiber powder also has prebiotics in it that fuels your cell lining and the small intestines. Uh, if you don't have enough fiber in your body, it starts eating the mucosa lining and that's what causes leaky gut. So we have to make sure that we are consuming enough fiber. 
Um, I mentioned glucose and probiotics are huge as well because they feed the gut bacteria. So that fiber powder that you used in your cleanse week has prebiotics and probiotics, and it also has a thousand milligrams of L-glutamine because what happens when people have digestive health challenges is um, it, we have muscle wasting. So um, because our body isn't processing and um, able to utilize the protein that we're eating, it starts eating your muscle because your muscle is made of protein. It starts eating itself basically because it's not getting the nutrients from the food. A lot of athletes use L-glutamine, but it's actually the most uh, main used amino acid to reboot your intestinal flora and get your um, your digestive tract back in balance. So that's why we have people not only eat the fruits and vegetables um, and real food, but um, use the cleanse kit that has the fiber powder in it so we can reboot and add back in what your body needs. If you aren't getting your eight to 12 vegetables a day, then you need to get your greens somehow because that's your energy and phytonutrients, um, fiber, energy, and life is what you're getting from fruits and vegetables. So you need to supplement with them. And that's what a supplement is. It's where you're lacking and not getting something in through the real food. Or if you have a state of disease, you might have to go in because you need more nutrients than you can eat, okay? So um, Ultimate Aloe is antiviral. Um, everyone's heard of aloe, the plant. So think about if you have acid reflux, you know, you put aloe on a burn on the outside of your skin. Well, your inside skin, um, acid reflux will burn. Uh, that's what can burn a hole in your esophagus and cause leaky gut and things like that. Aloe will go in and heal a burn. But it's also antiviral and it will help to increase your immune system. Uh, and just to mention, usually aloe has laxative properties in it. Uh, this aloe is 150 proof and all of the laxative properties have been removed. So I can actually, with a chemotherapy patient who um, the chemo is burning their insides, I can have them drink whole bottles of aloe um, to help heal that burn and increase their immune system. And they're not going to be struggling with diarrhea when they are taking this. Uh, I just wanted to mention women's health because um, it actually has a full dose of the activated Bs, the magnesium. It also has um, uh, non-constipating iron in it, which everyone needs, uh, but it won't constipate you. A lot of women don't uh, take iron because they think it constipates them. So it's a really powerful supplement that has everything in one. Uh, your seven-day cleanse system, you already um, did that, but just remember all of those herbs and things, they weren't just helping you um, go to the bathroom more. They were helping to go in and repair your arterial walls and get rid of things that don't belong there that have been sitting there too long. But, you know, enhancing your peristalsis that I've been talking about a lot is key. Um, and that's the seven-day Kit and you were drinking lots of water. You can do that lemon water every day. It actually alkalizes your body and it will stimulate a bowel movement every morning. Uh, you should be getting uh, lots of rest and sleep anyways, but I bet you might have noticed that you were sleeping better during cleanse week um, and using spices and uh, lots of reasons to detox and just know you can do this my first year because my body was um, I had so many things going on with inflammation and digestion and immune system. Um, I actually cleansed every quarter that first year and each time I felt more and more energy each time I also lost like seven pounds. That's really the only time I lost weight was that every three months when I cleansed because um, I guess my body was just like holding on. But, um, but it was really more about my health and how I felt and I got more clarity. Um, 
my brain fog went away. So um, the Allo tabs um, are only as needed. So if you go on a vacation, like I said, and and like as soon as I get on a plane at five in the morning, I get to the hotel room and now I don't have to go to the bathroom, right? So um, do not miss 24 hours without going to the bathroom because waste is toxic. So um, so I'll take Allo tabs um, after dinner if I haven't gone to the bathroom that day. I'll take uh, two Allo tabs after dinner so I'll have a normal uh, um, movement the next day and just get things back in order. I don't get let things get out of hand um, and go too long like they used to. So, um, you know, any of our medical wellness products, um, uh, Mandy said she would give 10% off anything um, that you want to try. And I just tell people, you know, to swap out, push your bottle back, um, you know, your multivitamin and try the women's health. And, you know, just try something for 30 days different and just see how you feel. Go by how you feel. Because if you don't feel different um, with things that you're doing, that's the first frustrating part, right? And progress is more than the weight on the scale. It's about how you feel in your health and energy. So I really want you to take stock in um, a lot more and just be more aware with what's going on. So um, does anyone have any questions on anything? It was a lot, right? <laughs> I have a question. Um, so for nutrition purposes, like low white blood, low white cell blood count, mm -hmm. is that a deficiency of some kind of nutrition or supplement, um, that along with low iron, like do those things go usually together? I struggle with those two things. Yeah. Well, I mean, definitely the iron I can uh, speak on for sure. Um, is about absorption um, challenges. Um, and a lot of people have to get iron shots, just like they get B shots. Um, but when you take something isotonically, like we actually have a multi with iron, um, then people don't have to get the shots. It's the second best way to get something in your body by drinking it. And um, so I would start with things like that, but um, have you removed gluten from your diet? Um, that's really usually the biggest troublemaker with low iron, I find, is um, gluten or dairy, like I mentioned. So, um, so I think the first thing is to think of your body as a scientific experiment, right? So when someone does a scientific experiment, you have to have constants. So I ate very, like... I ate a lot of the same things every day because I was busy, but I just made sure I was eating real food. And then when I went in with nutrients and absorbable supplements, and I just try everything for a month and see what differences, then go get your blood work done um, and see what changes happen there. And, um, and your body, you know, you should be, be able to figure some things out as you go. Um, because one thing I didn't mention, like when you get blood tests, that's a snapshot in time of that second, right? When you go and get your blood work done. So um, that's what the doctor is trying to base everything off of your blood test of that day, right? So that's where we have to um, pay attention more um, and write things down in journal. Anyone else have any questions? I have a question about the Anna um, taking the uh, antacids and the mm -hmm. calcium because I have to take the I take it twice a day okay. for the antihistamine purpose of it. So mm -hmm. and no one's ever told me anything about calcium or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what were you saying about taking calcium before then? Mm -hmm. You need to, and you need to take it isotonically because remember how I showed you how a pill sits in your stomach for up to four hours? Yeah. So if you took a calcium pill and then took your antacid, um, by the time that calcium pill breaks down um, to absorb, it's not going to be able to because the antacid is in there. 
So um, yes, 100% if people stay on antacids like for life, um, they'll end up with osteoporosis. So um, taking calcium um, before you take your antacid in that isotonic form, um, and ours is 375 milligrams because your body can only absorb 400 milligrams in a sitting, um, where the recommended daily allowance is 1,200. So I would take, um, we take a cap in the morning and we take a cap at night and then we obviously eat um, some foods with calcium in it, which actually are your green leafy vegetables. It's not dairy that you're getting calcium from. We're the highest um, consumers of dairy and we also in the United States and we have the highest uh, osteoporosis in the United States because we're sold the, you know, gut milk, right? But um, uh, our body can't break down and absorb the calcium in milk because it's pasteurized. That's why we're all drinking almond milk now and things like that. So um, eat lots of vegetables too. And um, do you have, um, I mean, you're younger. So, you know, these are things that show up later over time um, because I started um, fracturing. I was working out and I like fractured a rib and um, I was moving. I worked at my father's waterbed store when I was younger and I was moving a box and, um, you know, I kept fracturing my ribs and they're like, you're too young to have osteopenia, but I live done digestive health um, things and I drank coffee all day because I had no energy and coffee actually leaches calcium from your bones as well um, so I had to quit drinking the coffee um, I drink mocha tonics now instead um, which is good it tastes like hot cocoa but um, and then um, I had to get myself off of those antacids so Yep. Um, you can do it though. I mean, you know, histamines, that's, that's a temporary thing as well. Um, that is just a side effect from your digestive health. It's just another symptom. Okay. Um, we had a whole module on histamine. I can actually, I can send uh, Mandy uh, the papers from the module on my digestive health course. Um, because they specifically talk about, you know, histamine. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Just always have hope with everything, you know. Everything keeps getting better the more we keep doing the good things, you know, and it's just a process of healing. Love it. Thank you, Corinne. Mm -hmm. Anybody you're else? Well. All right. I, I do know I have one person that I want to set up a one-on-one. -on -one. She's been texting me. Okay. Good. So um, anybody else, um, remember Corinne said that if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with her, she would be happy to do a 30-minute meeting um, for you guys. So if you want to get in more depth in something that you're personally going through, um, make sure you reach out to me and I'll set you up with Corinne or unless you've got something, Corinne, that you want them to reach out to you whatever is most convenient for you. Yeah, no, no, you can just let me know and um, let just pick a couple good times um, for uh, a Zoom or a FaceTime and, um, and I'm sure I'll be free, one of them. So yeah, well, thanks awesome. for having me. Oh, thank you so much, Corinne. Yeah, thanks, Corinne. You're welcome. Thank you. Hope I get to come to Georgia and meet you, meet everyone. Yeah. Once awesome. everything's behind us, <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. you, too. you too. Okay, bye-bye.